I didn't realize we went live on Facebook too. <laughs> we do. I know we usually get a couple hundred views every week. Which oh, is really nice. Fun. Okay. Oh, we're recording. Okay. Um, should we get started? David, Michael, do um, one of you want to introduce Noreen, a woman who needs no introduction? <laughs> Great. Yeah. David, I'm still fooling with my stuff. So if you would be kind enough. Hold on. Well, I, I know everybody knows Noreen. Uh, Noreen, uh, and I go back to Noreen when she worked for Northwest Mutual. And, and then she decided she'd become an A1 realtor in Palm Beach County, uh, which she has become. <laughs> and is anyone more involved in nonprofits and, and working with all sorts of disadvantaged people and, and any, anyone who needs help, Noreen is always there. Uh, so, you know, everybody knows and loves Noreen. Um, so, Noreen, <laughs> what, what are you going to bestow upon us today of your goodness? David, you are too kind that you made my day, made my morning. Um, so I'm here, I'm the, I'm the, the, our Chamber of Commerce is representative on the board for the business development um, board. Um, so I was asked to do a little bit of an update on what's happening with the BDB. So um, I, I think I have a little bit, a little PowerPoint presentation as well. Oh, that's great. Yeah, to share. So, and I yeah. see Felicia, Felicia Goldstein. I, I I heard a few a few points she was making about the BDB. So that's awesome because Felicia, you I'm new to the organization. So feel free to chime in and add anything as I as I go through this presentation, please. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Some really cool stuff happening though. It's, it's so exciting. I mean, Palm Beach County is just, wow, on the map. So um, Noreen, you want us to pull up your presentation for you or do you want yes, to do please. it? Oh okay. no, I don't have, I sent it to you all. Okay, so Sarah's got it. She's gonna pull it up in one second. Okay. So great. everyone just give us a minute and we'll get it up. Yeah, I definitely rely on PowerPoint slides. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. So I, I don't want to assume everyone's familiar with what the BDB does, um, but um, the, BD, the, the Business Development Board was actually formed in um, 1982, and it was uh, actually founded by Chambers of Commerce and Economic Development Council's business leaders combined. And um, the goal of the BDB is to attract and retain businesses, whether it be via relocation efforts or assisting in um, expansion efforts as well. So um, we can go to the next slide. So one of the things that I didn't realize was that the BDB is actually a not-for-profit. So it's, it's actually a private corporation and it's funded 40% by county funds and 60% via donors and membership, similar to our Chamber of Commerce. So it's a 501c6. So that not to be confused with a 501c3, just like our Chamber of Commerce is a 501c6. So, you know, that's not something I actually realized um, ab about the BDB. It's, um, and Stephanie, you're going to crack up about this. Poor Kelly, she's got 42 board members on her board, on her board. There's 42 of us. So um, she's got quite a large board uh, representing all, all facets of business. Um, I'm not the only Chamber of Commerce representative on that board. There's, there's several other Chamber of Commerces, as well as um, various political office representation as well. Uh, it's got a large staff of 13 members, and there's currently 300 plus members, um, and it, we're working with about a $3.4 million budget. You can go on the next slide. So the BDB is, is a, you know, a facilitator, a liaison among all these um, various avenues, you know, su supporting businesses and business and CEOs uh, in all these areas. So if, a, so if an, a big corporation wants to move to Palm Beach County, the BDB may facilitate you know, conversations with schools, suppliers, uh, permitting, uh, construction, I mean, all land, brokers, real estate, all, all avenues and all demographics. So uh, really, really involved. The businesses that the, uh, the industries that the BDB focuses on, you can actually even add to some of this. I mean, obviously we have a lot of, and I 
I heard Michael, you were referencing the tech industry. Um, you know, tech industry, the marine industry, manufacturing, but you can also also add the sporting industry, the uh, the sports world. I mean, there's so many new things happening in Palm Beach County with polo and golf. With the with now we've got pop strokes and and uh, the PGA tours and and all that good stuff. So you can even add uh, add that industry to this to this list as well. So this is a slide that's basically showing results um, within one year. So just to give you an idea of some of the things that BDB has been involved with, this is, this is an average result. So 33 companies and bringing over 2,500 jobs to Palm Beach County involved with various, various connections and brokers and, and liaisons to, to um, lease out about, a, uh, I mean, look at the square footage. It's, just, it's absolutely incredible. <laughs> And then some of the other companies on there would be Johnson and Johnson that I, I think everyone else, uh, everyone knows that company as well. I think I noticed it's not on this slide. Um, but the net, but the the latest news, uh, the latest business to actually relocate here is a company called Gummy Works. And I don't know if everyone's seen the news about about Gummy Works, but they are a manufacturer of um, vitamins and various supplements in the form of gummies. And they are uh, expecting 350 new jobs over the next three years. And this is in West Palm off of uh, Haverhill Road. And it's in process now. They expect to be placed in place and operating. They, they have projected the second quarter of 2023, which we're obviously in. So that's, that's full steam ahead with Gummy Works. So this one's exciting. Tomorrow sports. I mean, we're hearing a lot about Tiger Woods. I mean, he's doing so much in Palm Beach County. This is just one example. This is a partnership with Palm Beach State College. And this is basically, um, from my understanding, it's a high tech golf league in conjunction with the PGA Tour. Um, Primetime play is expected to begin in 2024. This is um, 10 acres on the PBSC's campus in Lake Worth. And what's really amazing about this is that the students are actually going to be able to participate, potentially, um, you know, take on new career opportunities or explore other, other uh, avenues for their education in, in the sporting world. But this is, this is an incredible um, coup for Palm Beach State College. It's going to be absolutely unbelievable. I'm still trying to figure out what I, I saw pictures and diagrams of what the facility was actually going to look like. And it's just hard to hard to comprehend how incredible and how high tech this this will actually be I'm dying to see it in person. So and then and then you all we all know in Delray, I mean, with Tiger Woods, we've got pop strokes. But what I also didn't know with pop strokes is that they're actually going to have three locations, um, not only in Delray, but I believe there's one planned for Wellington and then one around the airport, the Palm Beach Airport. Um, prospect pipeline. So the other thing that I found I have found interesting, again, I'm very new to the organization, to, to the BDB. But one of the things that I find really interesting is that we're not allowed to know which companies the BDB is in conversations with. Everything's very, very confidential. So we, we, get, we get overviews of what the projects are in case any of us have connections or advice we can give, but we will never know the company name until it actually happens. So as an example, Gummy Works, I believe that one was called actual was actually called Project Gummy. But no, I don't know that any of us would have known that that was actually Gummy Works. So here here's an example of, of the prospect current pipeline. So Project York, I mean, I have no idea who Project York is. And I asked like how they come up with these names because there's been Project Socks. I saw one recently that was Project Pillow. You know, and in my mind, I'm thinking, Project Pillow, could that be a man mattress manufacturer? I mean, who, who knows? But they, um, who's ever taken the lead from the BDB um, comes up with some of these project names, but we're never allowed to know. It's all extremely confidential. And Kelly will share it, obviously, once it's all done, sealed, signed, and delivered. 
Um, so like our Chamber of Commerce, we have various groups like the ambassadors and leads groups. The BDB also has various councils. So this was a trip that was done with um, the Council of um, Higher Education Learning Leaders. So they're the presidents of our local colleges and universities. And they met with 15 executives representing the tech industry in this case. And the goal was to ask the tech industry where they're lacking as far as employees are concerned. And the higher education um, facilities wanted to know how they can improve their curriculum and prepare some of these students for these jobs in the tech industry. My understanding is that these types of meetings will happen across all industries, whether it's manufacturing or um, finance, um, all to, to offer uh, more opportunities for students who are, are currently in school. So that, that's really, really great. This is another council. This is a council of local headmasters within our private schools in Palm Beach County. They did a trip recently to uh, Hudson Yards in New York in New York, and also invited our public schools. A lot of us are aware that we have a shortage right now of um, school for, for uh, families relocating to our area. So this was done to basically hear from the families of companies that are looking to relocate down here on what their needs are and what they're looking for, whether it be private or public schools. So it was a, it was a basically one-on-one -on -one with families directly who, you know, families who have school-age children just trying to get an education. And this was done a few weeks ago and it was extremely successful. One of the publications that I'd love to share, um, if, if those of you who have, have families or school-aged children or in real estate and helping families relocate, this is a piece that the BDB put out on all the schools, whether it be private, public, charter, uh, choice. This is a really, really great piece. If you can get your hands on this and share with, with anyone who is looking to relocate that has school-aged children, it's, it's fantastic. And it covers the whole county. So this is something else that, that's happening. The, the BDB in partnership with Commissioner ba Baxter hosted 20 farmers um, and the farmers and the BDB sat down basically to talk about how what support they're looking for and what their needs are. And what came out of the meeting was the fact that they, they want more amenities and they need more housing and they need better roads. Plans are in the works to do these types of meetings with other commissioners as well. So um, I, I don't know what the schedule is, but the, but that's a those are meetings that are going to be going to be happening with the, with all the commissioners within Palm Beach County to find out what the needs are as far as the industries are concerned and, and the community is concerned and how they can help. So that that's basically the 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 spring update. I um, like I said, I am fairly new with the organization, still kind of feel my way around. I think I've been been um, uh, to two board meetings so far or three board meetings. They meet every other month. And um, it's it's been it's an amazing experience. Kelly is just unbelievable. She's incredible. Um, I, I hear that we're they're branding the term Wall Street South because we have so many CEOs and executives that have relocated here and so many industries. Uh, that they're that they're branding that term for Palm Beach County as, as Wall Street South. So look for that. I'm sure it's going to be really cool. So that's it. That's my update. Hope I didn't ramble too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. I, well, I, I, if anyone has any questions, I, I you know, or wants to know more information about how to join or how to get involved, I'm happy to help. If I don't know the answer, then of course I'll I'll work to get you answers. Do they put out a weekly email or a newsletter uh, that people can subscribe to? There is actually, yeah, bdb.org. Is there a weekly email that goes out? Yeah, there is. Yes. I think so. Um, it, to, yeah. It's really excellent to have Noreen as our representative. We always have a representative, but there's been a disconnect. Um, they're not presenting or, or coming back to 
our chamber members to let us know what's happening in the county. I'm lucky enough to go to meetings quarterly, the stakeholder meetings, so I know what's happening, but it's really great to have a direct connection to the Business Development Board through a trusted source and friend like Noreen. So we're really excited that you're doing this for us this year. Oh, thanks for the opportunity. It's, 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 it's interesting for sure. I'm learning so much. Thank you. Yeah, they're doing a lot of work to diversify um, our base of jobs. So obviously tourism hospitality is number one. I know, wait, I think farming is number one and tourism hospitality is number two, but that's why they've been trying to brand this area as the Wall Street South. And it really started from developing relationships with the CEOs around the pandemic time when they were leaving their offices in New York and coming down here and they developed a lot of relationships, which was excellent. And so as the CEOs started coming down here, they started relocating their workers here. Obviously the workers can work from just about anywhere, but they're trying to find spaces for them here. They would be a sector that could probably afford the house housing prices here. And that's another issue. We'd like to have more you know, smart technology and smart manufacturing but getting people to move here and you're in real estate, Noreen, you know that is a difficult thing because it's the prices of real estate is so high, even for the high earners sometimes. Well, not only the, the real estate prices, but the schools, you know, like we, we have issue. families now that are that are choosing not to move yet until they can secure a spot for their kids. And then they're going to come look for real estate, depending on which schools they get in. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's it is. is. Yeah, so education, as we know, and David Beal is on the Dari Chamber Education Fund, is closely tied to economic development in every way, whether it's getting people to move here and they'll be able to find schools for their kids or developing our workforce so they'll be able to take the jobs and the new high-tech jobs that are coming in, even in industry, to prepare them for that. So that's something that the Dari Chamber Education Fund, as well as the city with the new um, education and workforce development director will be working on closely. And they're actually gonna be over here next week. Jeff Forrest, assistant city manager and the new um, education director will be over here at the chamber to talk about those issues. We wanna make sure that we can get um, the people, the children educated for the jobs that are coming. Yeah. It's both low tech and high tech. We, we need uh, auto mechanics as, as well as uh, uh, chip manufacturers and, uh, and software developers. Uh, Auto mechanics, need, uh, now high tech. <laughs> we need nurses, we need a nursing assistants. Uh, uh, we need all the service people. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there are plenty, we need to make sure there's a pipeline um, to be able to, to feed that and to the, feed the workforce into the jobs that are needed because we do have a lot of jobs that are available. We just have to prepare our kids to do it. So it's all tied in together. So David, did you have any questions or does anyone have any questions for Noreen? Oh, Michael's talking. Michael, unmute yourself. I'm there sorry. You go. Noreen, have you seen um, any information um, concerning um, tech companies and names. Well, I guess they can't tell you the names, but um, tech employment, you know, everybody wants to be the Silicon Valley of the South. Um, do we know anything about that? And um, uh, do we have a pipeline? Um, do we have uh, people trained in the area locally in order to be employed? So I and I before we actually got started with the presentation, one of the things that you had mentioned was, you know, uh, working remotely. I mean, the, the tech and the, there's there's high demand, obviously, for tech and companies are relocating, but the employees aren't necessarily relocating. They're they're able to work from any, a, anywhere. So there's they're they're um, they're not going to be we're, we may not see the impact as far as leasing of large space. Mm. Um, but or the number of jobs locating here in that manner, but that may be that's, it may be that that maybe they come down in in twos and fours and sixes, right? Maybe uh, because yeah. we do have such a beautiful area. Yeah. Uh, so we'll have to watch out for that trend. That, yeah. That, um, and I, I can. Oh, sorry. I was going to say I can speak from experience on that because my son is a software engineer and he's actually in Chile right now. He's traveling the world and just working wherever he ends up. He's exploring. 
So, you know, being a digital nomad, that generation is what they, what they call it, digital nomads. Something you're going to have to keep in, in mind. Green, can I just ask you a quick question? Um, sure. You talk about education and the people that they're talking to are from up north. Did anyone bring up the fact of our teacher shortage and how poorly we pay our teachers? Because New York obviously pays their teachers, if not double, at least two to three times more than we pay ours. I, I, I don't believe it would have been brought up in that venue just because it was supposed, it, it was meant as a positive, we have options, <laughs> we're building it and hoping that they'll come. So I, I, I don't know that that would have been discussed necessarily directly, but, but you do bring up a very valid concern. So thank you, Noreen. Any other yeah. questions? Wait, before I go, I'd love to wish Vivian Don't a go. happy birthday. Today's Vivian's happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Vivian. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm on camera. 39 again. Huh? Thank you. Are those balloons yeah. behind you? <laughs> Uh, it is a new logo. They do look like balloons. <laughs> Appreciate okay, it. Let's, we go to our uh, our reports. Uh, Stephanie, we have uh, Alexina Jeanette from the CRA. First off, to bat. Are you still there, Alexina? Um, can no? everyone hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's good to be here. I loved hearing uh, a little bit more about the BDB. I've been going to their meetings, but this was like kind of the first time I kind of got a, a good summary about um, everything that they kind of touch. Um, so we have quite a few announcements. Uh, the first one being that last month we shared that we would be announcing um, the availability of affordable commercial office and retail spaces. Well, we are officially accepting applications for uh, 98 Northwest Fifth Avenue. We look to fill and lease the five bays on the first floor. Um, and these are about 650 square feet each at very, very affordable uh, lease rates. We're looking to um, rent them for 18 to $23 per square feet. So if you uh, know a business owner that's looking to expand to a second location or they're currently home-based but would like a storefront, this would be an excellent opportunity for them to kind of step to the next level. Um, we'll also be hosting a series of open house events where people can come tour the um, space once we get our um, official CO. Um, you can find additional information about the application on our website, and I'll drop the link in the chat. Um, and if anyone has any specific questions about it, um, I'll also include my email in the chat once I wrap up um, the updates. We also have an open invitation to bid for landscape maintenance services. So if you, any of the businesses you serve or anyone you know operates a landscaping business, um, and would like to uh, be considered for a potential contract with the CRA. This would be an, an amazing opportunity for them. We do have a pre-bidding meeting on Monday, May 8th, and that is essentially the only place where anyone interested could get their questions answered. So if anyone's interested, check out our website for the bid information and attend the pre-bid meeting on Monday, May 8th at the CRA, CRA office, We're located at 20 North Swinton Avenue. We also, I just wanna quickly highlight our paint up and signage program. We've made quite a few changes to our funding assistance programs over the years. And most recently, um, the biggest change was uh, restricting uh, quite a few of them to CRA owned properties, but the paint up and signage one is still open district wide. So if you know any businesses that would like a fresh coat of paint, um, on the exterior of their building or need some signage to increase visibility, the paint up and signage program would be a great opportunity for them. Um, and we, our arts warehouse is having, uh, is participating in First Friday this weekend. 
They have an amazing exhibit uh, going on this weekend highlighting a French, um, a French artist. The artwork was actually shipped here from France. Um, so that's gonna be an amazing um, exhibit highlighting uh, kind of some of the Haitian culture and some Haitian art. Uh, so check, check that out at Arts Warehouse uh, tonight from six to nine. Um, and the exhibit will be on rotation for a couple months. We also have uh, tomorrow, Saturday, May 6th, we have Crafted on the app from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. If you just kind of want to stop by and check out some music, get some good food, um, patronize some of our local craft um, vendors and businesses, come check us out at Crafted on the app at Libby Wesley Plaza from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for the CRA? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Felicia? Yes? Can you get an update from uh, Congressman's office, Congresswoman's sure. office? Sure, thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Uh, as you know, we relocated to West Delray, our office now, our district office. So if anyone needs anything, I've put the information, call and um, email. The Congresswoman is in session. They're diligently working on um, creating a budget. Um, we keep our fingers crossed every day. We'd like to see one. There's a good chance we'll see probably maybe a continuing resolution. And then some negotiations, the Senate side um, probably hopefully will step in and help with that. If you need um, anything regarding passports, which has been our busiest Thing right now is getting people passports. Um, after COVID, a lot of people hadn't traveled for a while. They're opening up, taking out their passports after they've made their reservations and realize that uh, they are expired. So please feel free to call our office for that or any other federal issues. Um, if you know a business that's having a problem with something on the federal side with an agency, please let us know. Um, we always want to help our businesses and our business folks who invest in our cities. And um, we have our next group of community funding projects that came in, um, doing a couple of projects for Delray, as well as some of our other cities like Boynton. And uh, that is all predicated on a budget passing. So we are really working hard to see that happen so we can get some more money into our communities. And if anyone needs anything or has any questions, please let us know. Felicia put her information in the chat so you can see it with a phone number and her email address. And I can attest to the fact that um, both Representative Frankel and Felicia are very responsive to the needs of our community. So they're always there to help. Thank you. Any questions Sorry, for, thank you. For, for Congress? She'll be happy to relay them to all the whole 360, 435 members of Congress, just give her a question. Like, why can't we move ahead in the budget? Yeah. Well, Kent Edwards. The pontification portion of the show has, was over at the beginning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, let's go to Kent Edwards, the city sustainability officer. Are we being sustained, yeah. Kent? Everything is sustained. Thank, thank you for that wonderful introduction, David. <laughs> what? What a bomb of, a, of an idea that is. Um, I I would actually, uh, in, in my update today, I'd like to focus on uh, saying thank you to the chamber and giving an example of, of how uh, uh, Delray Morning Live uh, was was really helpful in building that that network. Uh, I mean, like, like all of y'all ha have in your businesses built the, the business network, but we had uh, Delray Morning Live before uh, Earth Day at Lionfish. And I mean, you all know that Lionfish is a very sustainable business, but I mean, to me, looking at the details of, of what they do, it, it really is a model for what, you know, I, I would hope that businesses uh, across the city can do. Have a successful business, uh, be a very popular place to go, have, have fun while doing it, but run the business in a sustainable way. So, um, I mean, Lionfish, and as a marine biologist, when I first saw that name, I, I, I wondered about it because it is an exotic animal. It is causing real devastation to the reef. But even on their uh, web page and in their advertisement, Lionfish says that it is a sustainable step to remove this exotic fish out of the environment, 
which is a benefit to the reef habitat because lionfish are just voracious. They eat tons and tons of other small fish to where you'll, you'll just get a monoculture of, of lionfish, which is not a, a healthy habitat, not good for tourism, not good for the, for the reef either. So right there in the description of why they have lionfish on the menu is we're a sustainable business. So we pull lionfish out of the environment. And that approach has been so successful having uh, roundups and rodeos and having no limits um, on catching of a lionfish that the population of lionfish on the reef has been decreased tremendously. So it, it is a great example of how a, a good policy and good business can actually be good for, for the environment. So we went and, and had a really excellent show. I mean, I always enjoy and I, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about this kind of stuff uh, that people may not hear every day. Um, and while I was there, I, I made a pitch for the uh, city's green business program. And uh, yesterday we went out and presented the certificate to Leighton Manaya. And, uh, uh, you know, we're really looking forward to having ongoing kinds of discussions and highlighting the, the types of sustainable activities that, that they have. So uh, all in all, uh, with Earth Day and uh, Delray Morning Live and the Green Business Certification, uh, and we had two other Green Business Certifications that came out of Earth Month. It was, uh, it was a really good, good month and uh, really appreciate the, the time that the chamber has given to these issues. So thank you. Thank you, Kent. Thank you. Any questions for Kent and sustainability? Okay, move on to SBDC, Jackie Ramirez, Small Business Development Center. Good morning, thank you, David. Um, I just wanted to bring to your attention to a few things that are coming up. Um, there's a series of webinars that are kicking off May 15th in support of uh, We Heart Small Business and all of our um, us wanting to, to share as much information and, and education as we can during this month. Um, the first one is a virtual marketing plan that uh, starts May 15th, um, and there are a series so that you start with one and you can actually attend several of webinars connected to that topic. Uh, the second topic will be monetizing live content and back office management tools. Uh, third, the power of a, uh, business intelligence. Um, fourth one is hands on the digital transformation strategy. And the last one that um, happens in June 19th and 22 is business valuation. We actually have a business valuation tool. And we have individuals that can help companies um, carry out that process. Um, so look for that information that's going to be coming out. It's free, of course, um, to participate, and all of them are held from 12 to 1, so it's a nice lunchtime break your business owners can take advantage of. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is we have available what's called a Small Business Disaster Preparedness Guide, knowing that the hurricane season's about to be upon us, and part of that is a preparedness plan that any of our consultants can take businesses through. So we can talk them through all the issues that they need to consider, lay down an actual plan that they can follow through with, with their employees. So keep that in mind. And for any information on this, you can call me or you can go to www.sbdc.fau.edu and um, be connected with a client, uh, a consultant, or um, at least just um, check in with our social media um, platforms. So you can get more information as well. Okay, thank you. Hey, um, I'm gonna expand a little bit more on um, the SBDC and We Heart Small Biz Month. So as you know, May is usually We Heart Small Biz Month in Delray Beach. And as you know, every day, our mission is to help small businesses thrive at the chamber. But we wanted to highlight the things that all of our partners are doing. So in the Monday e-blast that you see going out, each of our partners will have a space to talk about exactly what Jackie just mentioned about the great seminars that are coming up over the next month or two. So look for that in your Monday e-blast. We'll also over the weeks be hearing from the DDA and the CRA and the city. And of course, we'll let you guys know what we have going on as well. So do we have any other partners to hear from yet? the Chamber of Commerce. Okay, I guess I could do that quickly. So um, adding on to that, 
our membership breakfast is coming up Thursday, May 11th. It's at the Aloft and it's called um, Home Care Inside and Out. So we're gonna hear from the chamber pros and hear about hear from 14 or 15 of our chamber members who don't get a lot of coverage a lot of the time. They're out working on houses. So we've brought them all together in one room. So if you want to know about anything from roofing or dog walking or cabinetry, they'll all be there to talk a little bit about their business. I'm also gonna give a presentation myself about the development that's going on in Delray Beach. So we'll get an update on some of the things that are coming down the pipeline. Um, uh, Noreen mentioned pop stroke, so we'll give you an update on that. We've got Jared from Sunday House, Sunday Village coming in to talk about their project and give us a timeline. Um, Renee from the CRA is also gonna give a few updates on what they have in the pipeline as well. So that'll be really interesting way to kick off the membership breakfast before we get to hear from all of our members. So sign up now, we're about to reach our limit um, that we have for breakfast. So if you wanna go, you need to sign up today because we'll probably have to cut off um, registration on Monday, which is a good problem to have. Next, thank you. This is a great one. We're so excited about this and we're probably gonna reach capacity this as well. This is on May 16th. It's our Focus on Women event called Sip and Share. It's the we're gonna be at the chamber and it's gonna be decorated in a lovely fashion as you can see. And we're gonna hear from Andrea Vallelli from um, Shift Happens and her theme is going to be happiness. So definitely we'll all leave that room happy on that day, especially with the great gift bags that we've got from Bellarena that's providing them as well as our sponsors and Noreen, you're one of our sponsors for that. So thank you very much. As well as Habitat Sklar, Prime IV, um, we have a wonderful group of women. So please come to and join us on May 16th at the Chamber. Contacts and Cocktails is gonna be at Johnny Brown's. That's kind of one of the reasons we went over to Lionfish and Johnny Brown's for Delray Morning Live to help promote them as well. Um, sign up early for that. Um, it's from 5 to 7 p.m. on May 18th. So it'll be a busy week that week. And the core men's group is going to have um, their quarterly event it's gonna be at Juniper Health. If you haven't been there, you must go there and learn about the concept they have for healthcare. It's on May 23rd from 6 to 8 p.m. We're having a Bloody Mary bar. I guess it's pretty healthy since there's uh, tomato juice in that. Light bites, they'll have speakers and the theme is health is wealth. So that's on May 23rd. And don't forget the YPAD group, super strong. Um, their event's going to be the last Wednesday of the month on May 31st at Deck 84, and that is sponsored by Delray Buick GMC. So um, we'll be accept happy to see our members 40 and under at that event. And I think that's it for the month. Oh, and don't forget to watch Delray Morning Live on CBS 12 and the CW. We now have a best of Delray Morning Live show every month. It is at the end of the month on CBS 12 and the CW, and it's really fun to watch um, the clips of all of the shows that take place during the month and do a recap. So we're getting lots of viewership and hundreds of thousands of people. So definitely check out Best of Morning Live on TV. And that's all I've got. Oh, Alexina. Alexina had one more thing she wanted to mention. Alexina? Thanks, Stephanie. Um... So we're soon approaching June. I know we just hit May, but June is right around the corner. And the CRA will be putting together a Juneteenth roadmap of acti local activities and events that are happening around mid-June leading up to Juneteenth. So if you all have any events around that time, feel free to share so it can be included in the Juneteenth roadmap. Uh, you can email me that information. Great. And um, Kay, I don't know if you're on your way over here because we have a meeting, but did you have anything you want to update us on with, regarding the library? Okay, she's probably on her way here because we have a meeting in a few minutes. <laughs> okay. So anything else, host, that you want to pontificate on before we wrap up? Uh, maybe Vivian wants to fill us in on advocacy. Is she still on? Uh, I am still on, but I didn't have my report of where we're at. Okay, so I do know what we're doing next. We're going to put together a survey for our membership uh, today, not today, this this month, and send it out. 
Um, we're really interested in hearing from our membership as to what your interests are, what you think are the most important things that we should be focusing on in the year to come. Uh, so expect to see that coming out from us sometime soon. Um, so I think that that's it that's going on with advocacy. I mean, we have some stuff that we're, we just put out a newsletter on um, the passing of the school vouchers and our, you know, where we're at with that and our concern about that. And we know that it, the voucher program has passed and uh, we have some concern about what it's going to mean for Delray. We know that for our, we have a vibrant private school system in Delray and we're happy for our schools, our private schools and what that means for them. At the same time, there's, we have concern as an advocacy group um, of what that would mean for public education and, for, and kids leaving, more kids leaving the public education system in Delray Beach and that will do for funding and programming. So that's a topic that's um, that it has been talked about a lot and um, looking at how we can advocate and be a part of a solution um, or the discussions on how we can support education um, through uh, these changes that are occurring. Um, other than that, I think that, you know, we're going to, can I just talk about one other thing? There is, I think that the, immigration bill uh, that we need to probably look at as a community and what that means for our businesses, because I think it's gonna require uh, businesses with 25 or more employees to use the e-verification system to verify um, status prior to employment. So we will be putting something together on that and sending that out to the community sometime soon. Thank you. And we also sent a note to Governor DeSantis' office oh, um, yesterday right. advocating for the appropriations that are going to go directly to the city of Delray Beach on um, certain issues. So it should be in the budget, hopefully no veto. So we've been advocating for the city's appropriations as well. Thanks. I was going to ask you to bring that up, Stephanie, or to the end. I think that wraps us up, Stephanie, unless anybody wants to chime in on something. David, um, I should mention in September, we're going to do a summit for economic development, Delray 2035. We're going to videotape it and take it out in 2035 and see whether or not we were anywhere close to being right. So you have a stake in this. Um, I'm glad I got this group. Anybody who wants to be a part of it, we want to get as many opinions as we can. We're going to talk about things like flying cars and all sorts of uh, interesting items that don't reach the radar screen very often. What's the restaurant business going to be in 2035? What are we going to be eating? What are we going to be doing? And we're going to talk about that in terms of how it is that, that we ride out um, whatever future uh, problems we have with uh, climate change. Um, so it'll be comprehensive and we want, we want lots of plans. So contact Stephanie sometime in September. Um, I, I can tell you it'll be a challenge. All right. Thanks. So, so Michael, why don't, you, be fun. why don't you pull out uh, the city's vision 2020, which we did in, I think, around 2008, 2010, and see how the we're, city we're did. Going by, yeah, we're going to go look at all the old plans. And let me tell you, we're going to, you, you should understand, it's not going to be pablum. We're not redoing everything. We've got to look for the mega trends that are going to hit us and hit us squarely. And we just don't know they're coming unless we look for them. So that's the way it'll be different than those. Not that they aren't important. One thing we're not doing is we're not going to reinvent the phrase village by the sea. We've been yes. through that. that that's, I think that discussion has happened. But we're going to be working on this all summer, actually. And so it's going to be an interesting forum. Um, we're going to definitely invite all of our um, economic development and government affairs First Friday Forum participants to that. And it will be very interesting. So that's our project for the summer. And we'll, we're going to pick a date probably next week and start promoting that in the near future. So thanks for reminding me about that, Michael. Yeah, and get the word out. We want diverse opinions. This is not about any one particular group. All right? Be great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm Michael, a, you may want to look at the I'm getting off. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Michael, you might want to look at the comprehensive plan and see how that juxtaposition. What? Works. Something called Always Del Rey? Yes. Okay. I, so I, we're going to do that. I, definitely. I think we are always <laughs> Del Rey. I woke up this morning. I'm still Del Rey. It's all right. We'll look at it. <laughs> Thank, you. thank you, Stuart, for laughing at that. Okay. I think we're done, everyone. So thank you so much for joining us today. More to come on that. And we're looking forward to seeing you at the events coming up. Stephanie, may I take 30 seconds? Can you hear me? Yes, of course, Stuart. I'm sorry.
I just wanted to thank you for sending around the invitation to uh, attend career day at Spady. Uh, I haven't done that in years. And uh, so I'm now signed up for five fifth grade classes. It should be a lot of fun. Oh my God, that's great. That should be a great day. Should be fun. Thank you for participating. You're always there for us. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Noreen, as usual. And we'll see you guys um, next month. Talk to you later. Bye. Thank you all.